What is that Great. shirt? It's like a 1989 Recreational Basketball League shirt. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm actually not sure. I found it at a show. I was playing a show in somewhere in, in Pennsylvania and found it at a thrift store like across That's the street. That's incredible. It's got like Nintendo font and it's, oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. It's, it's just like insanely soft. And, the local and league. Everything's, everything's like kind of pixelated and cool. Man, it's unbelievable what she like. I've been really on a thrifting kick the the past couple of weeks, and those, I mean, that is just pure adventure. Like the stuff you find in there for two dollars and a quarter, you know, it's like stuff like that. It's uh, old YMCA basketball shirts from like, and it says like Caleb on the back from some kid that got dunked on in fourth grade. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys? Are you what? Are you? Is that a big pastime for you being a, on the road a lot? Like like thrift store adventures. Yeah, I think it, we do that a lot. There's one in Portland that's really good. I forget what it's called. Danny, do you know what it's called? I don't remember what it's called, but I think it's called like House of Vintage or something like really generic like that. Um, yeah, it's huge. It's, you can just spend like hours in there wandering around. Yeah, we tend to pretty much, yeah, across the board, like when we get into a new town, especially if it's, you know, not a typical major city like somewhere outside of a major city somewhere in like the midwest or somewhere in the south or texas um the more rural the better like well because you know if you're in la or you're in new york or something you're just you're not going to find any deals yeah it's all picked over i mean i think yeah. it's fun to like i'll like buy a hockey helmet for four bucks and then auction it off on stage the night of and like make eleven dollars on it it's a good time <laughs> exactly you know have you found any thrift shop gold lately that's noteworthy i don't know no actually no <laughs> um I got our, our merch guy though is like and he's excellent at finding things and then turning around and flipping them for quite a bit of cash <laughs> yeah i got a uh like a rayon shirt from the 90s um that has like abstract art on it or whatever uh i thought that was pretty cool have you had any good like um you know you spent a lot of time you know on the in the in the van any good like um tour meltdown stories of recently recently no honestly we just did our first tour in 18 months a couple of days ago and uh we got home like day before yesterday and um no, we're actually, I think we've just been doing it so long and with each other for so long that the meltdowns probably happen more in the uh, hotel room. <laughs> yeah. How long have you guys been at it? Well, we started actually touring. Like, I think our first sort of real tour was 2011 or 2012. So about 10 years now. And I think I would say it's probably safe to say that 2012 onward we've been on tour a, a minimum of six months out of the year wow what was like the catalyst that um early on was there a was there a breaking point for that something happened where you got some some wheels and something that moved the needle to uh to allow you to do that many dates yeah i guess we got an advance and we bought a van with it and uh the van didn't actually last that long, but we bought like an Econo line. I think it was, uh, was it a 12 passenger or 15 or something? We got a 15 passenger Econo line. We got our, our first uh, recording advance uh, when we signed to a, a major label back in 2013, the first time we went through the sort of big label deal. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we got our advance. And the first thing we did was there's like a lot out in Corona, California, which is about like an hour from Los Angeles that basically only sells used fans. And we went there and combed over what they had and found a 15 passenger Econoline and sort of lived in it for, you know, seven or years or so after Damn, that. So you would sleep, sleep in the van most nights? <laughs> I think no. we would sleep on people's floors most nights, but somebody yeah. would usually. I slept in the van a lot because you, you kind of yeah. want somebody in the van too to watch the gear. 
yeah so that it, you know people br- won't break in and stuff Espe- yeah especially in those days when we didn't have any money for hotels or anything and we're just sort of crashing wherever we could crash at the end of the night you know like no plan so yeah sometimes you'd end up in certain areas and be like okay somebody should probably sleep in the van tonight so so riddle riddle me this william and danny what what happens i've i've thought about this scenario a lot yeah you know, like say i'm the guy sleeping in the van someone breaks in they don't know you're in there what do you do do you like you fight them or you mace them or like I, what if I they just you, murder you i think you just like it's like the what you do when you see a bear right like you just like make it you just make a lot of noise and make yeah. yourself big right tap them on the nose yeah. uh, <laughs> the guy whoever's breaking in uh yeah, I don't know. I don't even think we thought about it. I, mean, I think you just scream and then hopefully it would scare the person and they'd run off. Um, I feel like at some point somebody w- had been woken up uh, along the line by somebody who was like trying to open the door and they just sort of sat up and made some noise and the guy like scurried off. Yeah, because you could definitely freeze up, you know, that'd be like, holy shit, it's happening. The thing I feared most of my life, someone's breaking into my my home, so to speak. And uh, right. yeah, I might not be able to find the words and I, I suck at karate and self-defense. So I think I would be toast. <laughs> Yeah, you could just curl up under one of the chairs or whatever. <laughs> what if you were the guy that like you just hid under the bench seat and then like let the <laughs> guy steal the all the gear and then your band came out and you're like, what the fuck? You're the guy. Who was defend us. Why would you even be there? Yeah. Um, no, that's uh, <laughs> luckily nothing like that. I mean, knock on wood, we haven't had any real break-ins. Um, there was a break-in actually. The only real break-in that happened was a, about a – like half a block from my house after a tour and somebody broke into our van shattered the uh passenger window and went through the trouble of taking out a 60 dollar stereo system like going in there with a flat head and you know probably Very destroying 90s it in the process. move yeah but the best part about it was we had like a 200 dollar bluetooth speaker sitting on the front passenger seat that they just completely ignored yeah, yeah, those must have been some old school thieves because I remember that being a big deal in the 90s when like people would get CD players for the first time and you could kind of see into their car window and see the cool like little right. face plate on it and then those would always get jacked. But uh, yeah, no, so yeah, that, uh, this probably was somebody in like a stripy shirt and a, an eye mask, I'd imagine. <laughs> what a um, crazy time, like CDs and CD players just being the most valuable thing. I remember like people would steal CDs of just bands they had never heard of nor cared about. Like they would like steal a Dave Matthews CD <laughs> just because it was actually Trash. worth something then. You know what I mean? I mean, nice. Dave Matthews probably still worth a lot if he got the CD, the right CD, you know? You think so? I feel like he's one of the guys who's so mass produced. <laughs> it's all like buy, buy on Amazon for one cent and pay the shipping. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Nobody yeah. even buys that anymore. They just listen to Spotify. It's like What's no the- plastic. What's the next music medium just like for fun? Like feel free to get ridiculous with it. Uh, you know, we've done cassettes, we've done vinyl. What's the next physical-ish type thing to put music on? The chip. Probably chipping, chipping it up, right? I don't know. You mean actually, like we, a we, vaccine with, with a chip <laughs> in it? <laughs> we actually just played a, sh- we just played a show um, a couple of days ago with... Uh, a rapper in phoenix it was a pretty eclectic wild bill it was a lot of fun and this dude um was selling like flash drives for like 80 bucks upwards basically with just his entire catalog on it yeah i've seen the That's flash cool. drives i've never seen anyone get excited about the flash drive but that could be like a hip-hop scene thing yeah, yeah. i don't really know i've never even seen it yeah That's that cool. guy mega ran he was like uh He's like a, a video game, like eight bit rapper. Oh, he was cool! Really, he was really fucking cool. We once like we once just made a single that was available only on VHS, and nice. uh, <laughs> I've seen that actually recently too. I mean, I think, I think like, you do see like the VHS thing every once in a while. You'll see like a band who has like a video savvy friend who will mm. like have like you know like it's like. It's like the novelty of having a cassette, like getting a VHS. I'm pretty sure like actually, I can't remember who, one of our, one of our friends' bands like played a late night show and they put it on a, uh, on a VHS and I think that they sold it. 
Wait, so like yeah. like Late Night is in Letterman held it up and is like, yeah. this is a hot new rock band from Massachusetts, California. Exactly. And he had the VHS. Exactly. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful rock and roll band. Yeah. <laughs> Letterman's done, I think, right? What, did you get ner- yeah. nervous? I've always thought like doing the national TV would be the one thing that would make me get the like the weird butterflies. Well, we, ha- we haven't actually done it yet. Like I, I don't even care anymore. I just wanted to do Letterman. And it's yeah. like too late now. We did. So I don't even know. We did one of them, but um, it was one of them where they record you at a concert already. We did Carson oh. Daly. Okay, cool. Um, like late, 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 late night with Carson Daly or whatever it's called. Uh, did, you, we did, did you meet Carson? Absolutely not. No, I think like <laughs> he actually like had it kind of down with his whole like model for his late night thing. I think. I remember like we'd be playing a festival or something and you know, you'd notice that the uh his camera crew would be filming like six different bands or something like that. So he'd just get like an entire season's worth mm. of musical guests like in a day. Yeah, that's kind of the move, I guess. Efficiency. Right. Yeah. Have you gotten to go anywhere strange out of the country? Any bizarre bizarro destinations off the beaten path? Let's see. Nothing bizarre. I mean, we we played um, fun shows in like Tijuana. What? So. Yeah, tell me about that. What's it like to play in Tijuana? Tijuana is a lot of fun. Um, the crowd's always really energetic. Actually, the, our first record, or no, our our I guess technically our second record, Battleac. The uh, insert image is like a live shot from a show that we played in Tijuana. Um, we actually, we also did like, you know, Mexico city one time. And then we went down and played a show in Cholula, which is a near Puebla is the next major city to it. Um, that was really cool. Uh, Aside from that, I mean, when, when we started playing music, uh, together, William and I, we would like pretty frequently play, you know, park shows or like generator shows, like in a wash somewhere, like back in, you know. You mean just like DIY, crusty style, throwing your own show kind of thing? Yeah, we used to do that a lot, actually. Um, yeah. Those were fun. Yeah, that's kind of a new, I mean, I guess that's always been a movement. But, uh, I mean, if you have a nice PA and you got a van, it's like you can really kind of take control of your own destiny. And if you're willing to do the, the work and the production and the setup, you can make a lot more dough. Yeah, I, I also noticed like uh, when the COVID restrictions were not fully lifted yet the first time, but about to sort of be lifted. Like people were like scheduling dates, you know, for shows and things like that. And there was like an opening in sight in Los Angeles. There was a lot of uh, hardcore bands like throwing these massive, massive generator shows. Like there was one down the street from me that had like a few thousand people. And, Whoa. Like, was wild yeah there's no rules kind of i mean you just you got a warehouse you throw one at a laundry mat your buddy owns at a graveyard it's pretty yeah it's pretty <laughs> exciting yeah yeah um your manager messaged uh sent a message that said to ask you about the uk your uk birmingham soccer match it was it like a weird tour story situation is that something um it wasn't that weird like we had never been or i had never been to a soccer match at all um and we went i think it was like raining and the food was weird uh but there was like some <laughs> hooliganism after there was definite hooliganism there was like clear boundaries of like where the opposed and this wasn't even the premier league this was the league below the premier league like so the drunk like, the drunk league yeah, yeah exactly i mean the uh, drunk screaming league which it was like probably actually a little crazier because it just felt a lot more unsafe than maybe if you were at a proper stadium. Mm. Like <laughs> I remember like, you know, people throwing bottles and stuff like at the, uh, like the, the, the away team's side is like, you know, they have the, their own area and they're completely row by row guarded by police. Oh, dang. And like, you know, it's packed to the brim in there. Like probably, oversold for the away team and they're leaving on buses and stuff like that and people are chucking like 
soda or beer or whatever the fuck. Prison like rules, yeah. man. That sounds yeah. exciting. I would. I kind of want to go now. Yeah, that's there's, there's cool. something about the the English and soccer. It's just so psychotic. Like, I mean, I guess American football crowds are pretty intense, but not really. Not when you put it up to against, against like you know, drunk soccer hooliganism where they have legitimate gangs for each team to beat the shit out of the other gangs. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, yeah. there's, there's literally like pubs. Like I remember we went to a pub after the game and um, there was like signs like that you couldn't enter if you were like a fan of, you know, it was, it was for that team only, like specific pubs for specific teams. Wow. Full-blown segregation. I, I've told this story on the pod before, so I'll make it brief. But I went to a game in Argentina, um, my first trip out of the country, like a heated rivalry. And like we were sitting in the home team section. There's barbed wire separating the crowds and the players. Wow. And uh, it, it was like I thought it was raining after the game, after the home team won. We're in the home team section. And I look back, and there's just like – 500 brazilian cocks hanging off the balcony just <laughs> peeing on everyone oh pissing on oh all the God. fans Jesus wow yeah. yeah that's that sounds, amazing yeah, that's, that's it was pretty lot, amazing dude. i can't tell you how amazing it was <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like yeah whole whole nother level but. remember that story maybe you saw that news story where i think it was in Colombia. They, uh, the hooligan crowd like dug up some guy's grave and were crowd surfing his casket around because that's what he like wanted in his will or something. <laughs> oh <my laughs> a giant <laughs> casket crowd surfing across a sea of people at a soccer match. That's oh insane. No, I had not heard that story. <laughs> Well, that'd be a cool. That'd be a cool show for you guys to open, like open for uh, for the dr- British Drunk League or something. I think we would do well doing that. We'd get people real rowdy and ready to piss on each other or whatever, <laughs> whatever's going on. I think you might be right. That might be uh, like incite violence. Yeah. <laughs> so what's on tap for you guys next? Uh, is there anything kind of getting you excited outside of music? Uh, what, what do you do to stay sane uh, outside of uh, tunes? Um. Danny works on his bike, big yeah. motorcycle. I spend know, a, ton, a lot of time head. working on. Uh, I've got a an old Harley chopper and uh, and another bike that I just purchased as well. So I, I spend a lot of time. That's probably what I'm gonna do after this is go in the back and work on that. Um, yeah, Milwaukee. So Harley Davidson, oh, yeah. Milwaukee, big time, you know? big time, right? Yeah. So yeah, Harley is, uh, I mean, it used to be the biggest thing in the world. I, I think it's taken a bit of a dip. I don't really follow the scene, but I know a lot of the shops closed or they sold them. Um, and, but I'm sure that the, the rallies are still just as big and all that. I know stock yeah, and Harley has dipped a bit, but yeah, definitely. I mean, um, what they're doing currently, like, I don't know how well they're doing with their new ideas, but, um, yeah, I really enjoy the old machines. Are lot. you a Harley guy? Is that what you have? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, what? Like, tell me about the scene. Like, what's the Harley world like? Like, do you go to rallies, or do you like meet up regionally with with other people in that world, or not really? Um. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, there's a lot of kids my age and younger who it's like the the you know the the theme tends to be, I think, in like the motorcycle world, like the older dudes are on the new bikes, the younger kids are on the older bikes. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, I've got a 1957 panhead chopper and um, I've got a, there's a large scene here in Southern California and all over California. We go on basically just like camping trips and rides and things like that. And um it's great. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. You just toss your stuff on the sissy bar and you just go. Um, there was Man. a huge motorcycle show called Born Free. It's a chopper show that just happened in uh, Orange County where people uh, have bikes from all over the world. And it's pretty incredible. There's a lot of really cool bands that played that as well. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, intertwined with the music scene peripherally, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, there's no crazier feel and then flying down the road in the sun on a on a on a motorbike um i I can't i can't i've never driven a motorcycle but i lived in asia for two years uh, in vietnam so i drove a a cheap little honda wave motor motorbike around for two years and that was it was such a thrill you know um that's cool 
that did almost you, seems more dangerous to me honestly it was <laughs> like, a sketch fest scary. man like like i mean th- these roads are not nice like there's right. like huge potholes you hit a pothole you're pretty much done there's like bonfires on the side of the road sometimes in the middle of the road you know you're like dodging chickens that are running across the street yeah. and wild dogs and shit and the police are like always trying to like pull you over and take your money so <laughs> Um, and like the riding style out there too, like just traffic in general, it's sort of like there's no like right of ways, right? Am I am I correct? Like it's just sort of like a free for all. You just kind of yeah, yeah. Like I would say make so. Make a choice and go for it. It's weird. You explained it well, but for some reason that it just like kind of flows. You know, it's like it's yeah. it, like in the city, there's like a million bikes, and it's just like there's more than a million bikes, but it's just like some reason you don't see crashes as much once you get out into the open road in the country that's where you see like the sketchy crashes of you know we 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 saw like a truck flipped over and there was like a crowd of people standing around a dead guy fortunately i didn't see the dead guy but you know it's like that could you could see that stuff at any moment um but have you ever had any wipeouts on the bike yeah actually i was in an accident uh leaving a show with my other band uh God, probably 2016, I would guess that happened. You wrote a song about it. I did. There's a song about it on one of our EPs. And actually that accident, uh, I was riding a Honda at the time and I'd been looking to find, I wanted to, you know, move into getting a Harley and stuff like that. And that accident sort of was the catalyst that, you know, made that happen in a a way. And that bike got totaled. And then I was just like, all right, I guess I'm going to have to get a Sportster. Oh wow, that so that didn't spook you at all as opposed to like I'm I'm hanging up the bike thing? No, it was I mean, no. That was it was a hundred percent that person's fault. Um it's crazy. Actually, Brandon, uh who has been playing guitar with us recently was following me to our rehearsal space to drop off the gear from the show. It was at this uh place in downtown called the Smell, and I was in the middle lane and somebody was in the right hand lane on a one way street and did a U turn on the one way street directly in my path so i went down to prevent like you know t-boning and flying oh, over shit. the car yeah yeah damn all right well uh glad you're still trucking that sounds sounds yeah. like a sketch fest yeah it's definitely a little sketchy <laughs> i want to bring back the bike get like a motorbike in milwaukee here but this is like one of the sketchiest cities for driving there's just like I just feel like there's more meth heads per capita than like anywhere else. Like <laughs> everything will seem calm and chill. And then there's just like dum, dum, some guy with no muffler and no like windows just comes right. flying by and almost smokes you. And Oh my gosh. Yeah. The potholes it's, it's uh, yeah. It's like some of these roads are just like roads in like rural Russia, you know, they're crazy. Wow. <laughs> I just started riding those. Uh, this is the first tour where I saw like those bird scooters and decided to like give it a give it a go. Um, it's kind of fun. It also like they don't have any shocks, so I kept feeling like I was gonna eat shit at any moment. But yeah, um, it was kind of a fun way to like see around you know the venue you're playing basically. But like. I think they're cool. A lot of people hate on them. They're definitely sketchy. Um, sometimes the brakes don't work, but I mean. It's good for tourism. You want people to see your own city and you want to see other people's cities when when you're out and about. But uh, I had heard that they don't even have their own employees like picking up the bikes. You can just like anybody with a van can go pick up the bikes and then yeah. charge them up and then they give you like 30 bucks to charge a thing or something. Is that yeah, something? yeah. We actually had a friend who was doing that. He had a pickup truck and I remember about like a year or so ago and he was, I was catching up with him. He's like, yeah, man, I just loaded i've been doing that for work lately i just loaded up with as many of those things as i can and go take them to get charged and they pay me <laughs> that's and not people, bad yeah yeah people love to take those too and throw them in the lake like echo park lake or whatever <laughs> just leave them there yeah. uh i don't really know why people love to do that but they do. that is a great question to ponder because it happens internationally you know yeah, yeah. Just like, it's like it's like those people that were like tipping over smart cars when they first came out I wonder if they're just like renegade, uh, like woke hippies, like damn the man kind of thing. I just want to break shit that's corporate. Maybe that's it. It could be. It seems like it's less thought out than that. It's just like, let's see what this would look like in the lake. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess like thrills are cheap as they say. And, uh, 
I mean, any chance to feel like you're in high school again, you know, if, you know I, I kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I think the Pando was a great time to kind of feel like you're in high school again, at least like us in Milwaukee, my buddy Scotty and I, we would just like walk around the ghost town and like, you know, we would like make a party on a next to the river and uh, just, you know, crack open some beers, which you couldn't really do before. But now the cops are just leaving us alone or we find a rooftop or like uh, break into like a, a pool at like a fancy apartment building and sit in the hot tub for three hours. So it was, I felt yeah. like a real delinquent. It was a great year. Yeah, it's funny, like how similar, like Danny and I grew up in the same suburb and yeah, we would go drink like Mickey's grenades, like under <laughs> an overpass in the wash or yeah, we'd break into like a pool and hang out in the hot tub or whatever at night. It's just kind of the same thing everywhere. Yeah, I guess so, that's just so what kids do. What happens, William, what happens in the underpass? Like that seems to be like not a sought after scene, but were you just going there? Cause it was like a, a secret place for underage drinking. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. There wasn't like, it wasn't like, yeah, there was like a cool thing happening down there. It was just us hiding. And was, uh, you and a bunch of crackheads or what? <laughs> Usually it was just me and like three friends and that was, that was it. And then we do like mushrooms or something. And yeah, search for snow spiders. Yeah, or you you know, it's just like there's only so many places as like a teenager in the suburbs that you can go drink, right? <laughs> yeah. Go be yourself. So it's like you go into the wa- go go in, go into the wash or, you know, those kind of places. Oh man, I love it. I think there's just something about growing older where like society and people who subscribe to society and I guess everyone does where they're like, hey now, don't have too much fun. Don't look <laughs> immature. Too much fun <laughs> is immature. Be a grown up. And like at a certain point, uh, that's kind of bullshit because I think that's why people get so sad as they age so often. It's like, man, I just want to be a kid once in a while. Yeah, you just want to like, yeah, not have to pretend to be an adult because it always feels a little bit like you're pretending. Mm. Uh, I yeah, I, I get that. And like, I've, I've, you know, with s- certain girlfriends over the years, like some of them I think would embrace like my inner inner child that when it would come out and then other ones would be like, this guy is a joke. <laughs> like, I can't be with this guy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we, you know, I remember the wash is always there, you know, it's always, yeah, it's still you. there. It's still there. You can Just go waiting. at any time. <laughs> Wait, when you say the wash, are you talking about literally doing laundry? No, no, no. Uh, it's, maybe, we maybe, that's like a, that is. maybe that's like a, 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 a Southern like California a language thing. thing. It's like, uh, the wash in all over Southern California, there's these like river beds, which have all dried up because, you know, Southern California has been in a drought forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically like imagine like a, a dry riverbed with like pavement. Yeah. I've seen it in in Travolta movies. Oh yeah. 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 Or like in Terminator two, you know, like, uh, the the whole motorcycle. Yeah. The chase. Yeah. That's like a, that's a wash. That's a, that's not the most ideal wash because they got those, that's got like, uh, you know, straight wall kind of thing going on on either side. You want one with like a little bit of a, a dip, you know, like an angle. Yeah, you, um, you could like skateboard in there and stuff, huh? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back where we grew up, there was tons of those and they're just sort of just empty and there's nothing there but trees and dirt. And Wow. Yeah. You seen that movie mid 90s that Jonah, Jonah Hill directed? Uh-huh. No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's a gem. Yeah, I feel like it paints that picture really well. Just a kid, a little kid, you know, kind of just trying to survive in, in society and in school and uh, trying to get into skateboarding in the, in the, ni- in the crusty 90s in, uh, in yeah. uh, crusty Southern California. It was pretty like spot on, honestly. I went and saw it with my ex-girlfriend and she was laughing a lot because there's, it, a lot of it takes place more in like the sort of the west side mm. i grew up in the valley which is a little more north uh but like um she like knew a lot of the places and i i um yeah it was pretty like on the it was pretty like spot on like 100 yeah it's what a it real was, like gem. in my exact like time growing up in the valley is he oh. fr- is jonah hill from 
Southern California? Where is, Probably. Is he from? I don't know. But, but, but what do you think about this? Uh, is crust something that is just going away? Because like anytime I drive around Milwaukee, I see all these cool old buildings, stuff that has a bit of an edge to it, some nostalgia, some history. There's always some like guy with infinite money that comes in and bulldozes it and builds some shitty looking new apartment. And, I, and that seems to be like everywhere in America right now. And then like, I guess some of the hipster places will try to like replicate the crust of like what a place would have looked like in the 90s or, or 60 yeah. years ago. But I just feel like does, maybe there's no respect for the crust. I don't know. <laughs> does that make any sense? Yeah, they'll like hire some like interior decorator to like give it like uh, give all the metal like patina and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you own a, a restaurant or a public establishment, stop cleaning it. Just let it get shitty. It looks awesome. <laughs> I think there's a there's a lot of crust still, I think, in LA, just in parts that aren't hip that people don't go to. Like straight downtown and stuff. Mm. Uh there's uh Skid Row. It's pretty crusty, I guess. I mean, I think I think you're right. LA is is beautiful in its decay. It's it's you hear people yeah. like say shit like, Yeah, it's not, it's a it's shitty, whatever, it's a concrete jungle, but it is I think it's one of the most beautiful cities ever. I love that kind of architecture, the the ghost signs, the falling apart motel, you know, yeah, neon signs. I and that's my concern is like in the next twenty years, is all that stuff toast once like five people have all the money and buy all the property? God, hope not. Maybe. Sorry, am I, say, am right? I buzzed? No, up? no. I think, uh, you know, maybe that's like at that point, it just ends up being in like the rural areas. Like Central California will probably be the holdout, you know, be the last holdout for crust. Yeah. Yeah. We got to keep the crust, people. Keep yeah. it crusty. Fresno. Fresno is just a crusty sounding word. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> are, you sur- are you guys like grow up surfing and stuff? I can't imagine how cool it was to grow up near the beach. I don't even like the beach. Don't yeah. go. I don't like hate it or anything, but it's still a lot of sand. You know? Yeah, I, never, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I never surfed. Uh, I, I skated. But um, I mean, right now, I don't even know if you can go to the beach. There's been like a raw, oh, sewage, yeah. raw sewage spill happening for like a month in Santa Monica. So. Oh. Same in Milwaukee, man. The The water system is so shot here. It was built by like uh, some like club foot idiot in uh, 1910 and uh so when when it rains a bunch the all the like the water systems fill up and then all the shit pours into lake michigan and then it just Ugh. smells like shit oh yeah. man damn i've definitely swam in lake michigan a couple times yeah you're you're toast yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be good i swim in that all the time after this pot i'm gonna go jump in there nice it's great it's gorgeous i've i swam in it in chicago and then we swam in it in uh, michigan as well yeah you can't beat like an icy lake swim you know it's a real that's some real therapy right there it's so nice yeah yeah i don't know if you guys are like afraid of fish or what but i i don't like (laughs) thinking about what's swimming underneath me i like i'll never open my eyes underwater yeah yeah uh, i i have all these nightmares about dark water so like even like if I go try to swim like in weird places, I get freaked out pretty easy. Well, there's a whole do there's a whole weird um, phobia. There's a name for it where you see when you see items or objects underwater, it's like it horrifies you. It's like freaky. Do you know what I mean? Where you like you'll see like a bag, a plastic yeah. bag drifting underwater, your, and it's your like your brain just turns it into like something compl- like you know, yeah, anything else. When, that's when I was when I was a kid, I was afraid of the shadows in the pool. Like, because I thought they could be something. I don't know what. Here's yeah. something on that note, William. I was afraid, like, uh, when I drank water out of a glass when I was, like, four, I was always, like, horrified of, there was, like, I would see these weird, like, pink sticks on the other side of the glass. And then after, like, two years of being afraid of it, I realized it was my own fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You remember that. So Wait, weird. how old were you? I I don't know. I was probably like four or five, maybe maybe even six. Uh, Uh, Yeah, I was a slow developer. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. That I think it was that those recurring nightmares of dark water that made me as a kid like afraid of like pools and stuff. Maybe that's why I don't like the beach too. Haven't really thought about it. 
I'm not a beach guy either, man. I'm afraid of sharks. And I just don't like, uh, I just don't like getting sunburned. I'm Polish. I get roasted quick. And yeah. I think I'm intimidated by like, like, um, like jacked dudes throwing footballs around. I don't know why. <laughs> I got stung by a, a jellyfish for the first time uh, this summer. How did that go? Um, it was not that bad. Did I, somebody pee on you? <laughs> No P. Uh, Aren't you supposed to do that? Well, yeah, so. we actually looked it up. Uh, my my girlfriend got stung uh, before me, and then I got stung about shortly after her. And um, we looked it up, and now that's like a that's a that's not myth true. perpetuated myth. by yeah, our yeah. friends or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perpetuated by those jacked and tan bros to fuck yeah. with each other. <laughs> exactly. What about tour pranks? Is that something that keeps you occupied? Is that something? We don't, we don't, we don't really, we're pretty like vanilla on tour. Like we don't prank each other. I think touring is really stressful. And so I guess people get out that stress in various ways. Maybe There's, pranking each other is one of those. But we The don't only really, thing I could really think of that. is the like the thing, like the, that thing or whatever, you know? Oh, yeah. You guys both looked at. <laughs> For those we of don't, you just hearing audio, it's where you put your finger in, in like a circle. AO, yeah, like the AOK. Oh, the AOK sort of thing. signature. Yeah. It's Which like is apparently put... some sort of racist thing now. What? And then <laughs> if if the guy if your friend looks at it, you're allowed to punch him or something? Yeah, like you if you stare at the the circle, you get punched. But um I never played that one. Uh our old guitarist and our drummer like to play that one though. <laughs> I don't like that you that people sign you up for that game when you don't want to play. I hated right? that yeah. in high school. I think that I always thought that was fucked. And well, yeah, I don't... totally. And that's like I feel like some of the last tours when that that was happening. I'd be like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not playing that game. <laughs> I mean, um, what? Go ahead. Yeah. There. Well, there used to also be like when we first started touring and everything was new and exciting. Like we'd play that game Buffalo. Um, but I don't think that lasted very long. And now like half of the band is sober. So it's like, it's definitely not a game that is played anymore. Mm. What makes a little more sense is the, is like the game where if someone farts and they don't say safety, you get to punch them. That you ever play that sense. one? Yeah. Cause that's, no. yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just fair. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Oh yeah. I, that guess, was big. I guess that's just yeah. like, yeah, the safety, safety. I just remember that from like junior high or something like that. But yeah. I thought about that one in a while. We had a ska band in high school when we were 14 and that the safety fart game, that was a big one. Um, Cause everyone in the band was just, you know, farting savages. It was rough. You played in a ska band. Oh yeah. I thought everyone did that. Just me. Our drummer, Eric was a big ska guy. He played in a ska band called change for a penny. I think is what it was called. Oh, it was a great time. It was either change for a penny or laundromat robbery. Which one? Or is that a real band? Mm -hmm. uh, he was in laundromat robbery and five finger discount five finger discount yeah those are all uh, aren't those all sort of like the same name too like oh, change yeah. for a penny five finger discount laundromat robbery it's all like oh yeah style change in your pocket like <laughs> why does no one like ska anymore what is that i i think <laughs> i think people do I think it's they just coming. like don't talk about it I think the next wave, what is it going to be? The fourth wave of ska is like inbound at any moment now. Third wave. So people love it, but don't admit it. It's like, I feel like guilty yeah. pleasures are like in now. You're like, yeah, I love, uh, I love Britney Spears. And yeah, I love Skinner. And you just kind of admit what you like, which I think is great. But I never hear anyone be like, yo, I love real big fish, bro, or whatever. And I kind <laughs> of do it, whatever. People are just too, too ashamed. <laughs> PTSD from uh, getting the, their wallet stolen in the mosh pit. Yeah, yeah too much skanking. All the chain, dude. They're up. They're just after change, you know. So wallets are not safe. What were chain wallets? Was that a was that an actual thing that helped your wallet from getting stolen, or was that just supposed to look cool? I wear like, one to this day. So um, I wear one. It's I think it started with motorcycle culture because you're riding on a bike and you don't want your wallet to fall out of your rear pocket. Ah. Um. I could be wrong, but I still wear one and I am certain I would have lost my wallet a lot more in oh. just general life uh, if I didn't wear a chain wallet. Man, when I see a guy with a chain wallet, I'm like, that guy is tough. I would not <laughs> fuck with I that have a really, guy. I got a really small chain on mine. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm fascinated by the motorcycle culture. I just feel like I, sometimes I feel a lack, like I need to be part of a club, like a lack of uh, inclusion. Like I need a social club or a cigar club or something. I feel like I'm just kind of like a wandering soul at the moment. You got yeah. any ideas? Uh, <laughs> Dan just club, got into cigar cigars club. too. Cigar club could be good. Yeah. Those On tour, we just went to a, for the first time ever, we sat in a cigar lounge uh where was it that was, was it in san diego in, i was in san diego yeah we actually like got cigars and sat in the lounge and nice smoked them who's the really... lead singer i don't know i know you're a couple of your records but i don't know your your band intimately are william are you the singer yeah i sing. okay you get you get like voice loss phobia or anything like that no, because like I scream a lot, so sometimes I think other people are worried about their voice, you know, sounding bad. Uh, but mine, like, I feel like when it sounds bad, that's that's good. Ooh. So like, as it as tour progresses, it gets a little bit more like I don't even know, like just rougher. It. Yeah, yeah, it gets more grit, and I think that's usually good. I've I've like lost my voice a couple times, and I've tried all the stuff like the honey. And all that's, I don't think any of that stuff does anything. I think mm. the only thing you can do is drink a lot of water. Yeah. And that, yeah. that helps. You definitely Man, like, I mean, and you, you do, you enjoy smoking every once in a while too. So. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I after every pop show pop. I smoke and it's not good, but I think it, yeah, kind of that grit thing mm. can be. Yeah. Can it be. almost sounds like you've like exercised it or like, or like, yeah, toughened it up to a point where it's kind of like immortal or something. Yeah, it's got like a thick callus, uh, my my throat. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't worry about losing my voice. It's it's I can just scream through it. Also, Danny sings along a lot of the stuff. So if if I'm out, he he's singing. So it works out either way. Yeah, I can usually cover on the high parts if he needs, and we we double vocals pretty frequently, like almost probably 80 to 90 percent of the choruses oh cool cool live like we both sing um but yeah uh I, yeah i i never really i i lost my voice a lot in the early days of touring but that i think was more attributed to like partying and mm. not sleeping and things like that um, yeah and so. uh did was like mental health on tour ever an issue for anybody just like getting grinded down and just worn out and just totally yeah yeah i think it's, it's, I think it's become more of a conversation too like in the last couple of years now that like we're all out of our 20s and we're all like uh we were we had some moments where we we're just like is this are we is this are we gonna keep doing this like what's going on here mm. yeah like we I think we just change the way we tour. We like, we try to take it easy. We try to sleep as much as possible. We try not to drive like through the night that much, but it is like tour can be like kind of nonstop anxiety, especially if you like drink a lot on tour. It's just a lot of anxiety from spot to spot. And then, you know, you relax and you have fun at the show, but mm -hmm. then that's only like, you know, 5% of the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, then I think the rest I, of the time you're just driving and not sleeping or whatever. Sleeping to poorly sometimes. for sure. And I think like, yeah, I think a big part of it, like we just don't really go out after shows anymore. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's just, um, we used to like play a show and it'd be like, okay, what's going on now? And now it's mm. like, we play a show and it's like, okay, where, how far is the hotel and how much sleep are we going to get tonight? <laughs> Yeah. And then did you, did you guys quit, quit boozing or? Yeah, yeah. we both did. Yeah. yeah. I've been, I've been sober just shy of five years and William actually is just shy of 90 days, I believe. Right. Nice. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Has there been it's a vice well. that's kind of crept in to, uh, to kind of scratch the itch a little bit? I mean, I think in like social situations, it's just like you just have to have like a beverage in your hand. And for me, that's like sparkling like water. Yeah, yeah, like sparkling water or like I actually really like I, I used to be a big beer fan, you know, like and so like there's actually nowadays there's a pretty wide selection of uh, non-alcoholic beer. out there. I love NA beer. I think it's great. It's great, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially if you get a good one like, uh, you know, I don't know, Lagunitas is making a pretty good one now and you can. 
even just like oh duels or milwaukee's best is they got a solid na you know like yeah man i mean we've been doing this thing uh most wednesdays where my buddy otto comes over and we watch vintage brad pitt movies and drink na beer it's pretty solid cool. nice <laughs> really nice. break yeah. a river runs through it they just uh, yeah. so they just start my buddy uh miles coin and otto they started a podcast called pit stop where they analyze every brad pitt movie ever made and they just put out the first episode and it's river runs through it and they, they kind of like nice. rip on it and it's it's a funny pod it's quite good oh, oh yeah. cool uh i got i started getting into uh puff bars or whatever like vape nicotine vape pens and i think i'm overdoing it and i'm gonna have to quit but i started that like right when i stopped drinking and uh that had like you get that wet lung or whatever they call it, like if you do it too much. Oh, yeah. Um, I, don't, I haven't gotten into vaping, but uh, I do like a little nicotine once in a while. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, for me, and I definitely, like when I went to rehab, it's like uh, you always know like when there's like an AA meeting somewhere just because there's like a, if you're like by like a community center or like a church and there's a crew of people smoke. just smoking. <laughs> for sure uh, an, an AA or an NA meeting going on so you, can you kind of tell like an NA person or it's just spotting them on the sidewalk no 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 not okay. at all uh unless they have like a you can tell a group yeah yeah okay. I mean be if like I, that group is a group of NA people I'd say if you were like at any in any neighborhood where there might be like a church or something like that or like a some kind of community center and it's mm around seven or eight o'clock or nine o'clock and you see a group of disheveled humans outside smoking <laughs> and a you know cloud of smoke around them that's a pretty safe bet um was rehab interesting any any good stories from there or rehab was was great um it was pretty wild i really didn't want to do it at first but um it was great it's like going to it's like a, it's like going to high school for fucking your life or college for like fucking your life up basically like you have like classes all day long and like not not so much classes more just like group therapy sessions i'd say is maybe more accurate but it, it's like you have like a you know a, it's like having a schedule again like okay tomorrow you're waking up you have this one at 8 a.m this one at 11 a.m lunch and then you know this and this and then you go to a meeting at this time mm -hmm. and then the, bedtime you know 9 30 whatever like um so yeah it's like a summer camp or college for like fucking your life up and you you learned uh how to make that stuff what was it called spread spread yeah um Which in california, like a prison thing i guess yeah in california um probably in other states as well like the i mean certainly our, our prison system is completely overrun and um Basically, if you're a non-violent, but, you know, what they deem like a serious drug offender, uh, a lot of times they'll put you into a rehab program long term mm. instead of prison because the prisons are so crowded. So there's like this, uh, you know, half of the rehab is like people there, you know, to get sober. The other half is people who are there because it's they couldn't you know the prison was full or the wow jail, whatever so uh at night that uh group of folks would uh make spread which is like a prison food which is uh you get a trash bag and you fill it with uh instant ramen like cup of noodles ramen you know just like the mm -hmm. dry ramen you break it up like pound it until it's like all broken up then you fill the trash bag with uh hot like hot water and um, you basically cook it in that. You let the water out, put in the trash bag. Then you put mayo, you put a uh, chopped up spicy pickle, you put uh, hot Cheetos, which you crumple up. Holy shit. You put uh, sometimes chicharron, which is like pork skin, like cracklings, you know, or whatever. Like uh, put all that stuff in there. And, uh, <laughs> and then they rip the bag open on a table. And then you have this stuff, this like mayo ramen oh my God. thing that you either put like in a tortilla or you put on bread and it's called spread. Yeah. Well, if you hide the texture in the tortilla, I could see it. I could see it. I mean, it's definitely, it's disgusting, but it tastes good. I bet it you tastes know? good. Like, yeah. it, it tastes pretty damn good. I mean, it's just like crunchy, <laughs> spicy. Yeah, you made me some. And, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's not bad at all. I made it when I got home from rehab because I was all excited. I learned a new dish. What was like your come to Jesus moment before rehab where you're like, oh, time to go to rehab? Oh, God. A um, bunch of crazy shit happened, but it all sort of like culminated into like one night where I microwaved my phone and disappeared. And uh, uh, then the next day, William and a bunch of friends thought I was dead and uh, because nobody could get a hold of me. Nobody knew where the hell I was. And um, I like somehow then just showed up at William's house and I was like, all right, what's going on now? It's like, where's the party? I didn't like, was oblivious to the fact that people were like upset. Searching for you all night. Searching for me all night. And my mom thought I was dead and everybody thought I was dead. And so then they'd sort of just like kept me there. And then I see like a bunch of people like gradually showing up, you know, and then I see this one guy uh, who's a good friend of ours, but we don't see him very often. And uh, when I see him show up, he's been sober for a long time. I'm like, oh shit, something's, <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What yeah. about you, William? Um, Nothing specific. I think it's just, you know, I've been drinking for a long time and uh it's like uh, too much of a part of like my social life and being hung over all the time is is difficult um touring drinking the whole tour is really difficult uh just like wears you down a bunch so i just wanted to uh i don't know give it a shot like not drinking for a while and mm. see see how i feel see if it, it works or whatever. Like I've, ne- I've never gone any prolonged period of time without, you know, going to the bar or whatever. Um, so I just, just wanted to see what it would, what it would be like. I guess. So, so there's so, no like rock bottom moment yeah. or whatever. Were, were you, what was your sweet spot? Were you having like a couple drinks a night, like two or three or was it, was it? No, it's like, I mean, we played shows. I don't remember at all. Like, yeah. um, but I had fun. Like, I'm sure I did, but, uh, I, yeah, it was just kind of that, like you end up like not paying attention to how many drinks you're having. And then, you know, you, you wake up the next morning and you, you know, don't yeah. remember what happened the night before. Sure. And then that just seems like too much. Yeah. Well, that's great. You guys, it seems like you got a ton of momentum right now. You feel good. The, the, the band's on a roll. So yeah, it's awesome. It's, this has been a real easy episode, real, real fun to talk to your sweet dudes. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This is rad. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, cool. Any specific stuff you want to punt at the moment before we close up shop? Um, we have a new album coming out uh, October 22nd. It's called die 22nd. Uh, I don't know. Oh, maybe the 23rd. I don't know Around when this there. podcast is coming out, but okay. uh, if if it's before then, you can like um, you can pre-order the vinyl. Um, yeah, sweet. And all, some of those songs are already on like Spotify and YouTube and stuff. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll put it out Tuesday morning. So yeah, cool. yeah, oh, we'll cool. send people. Yeah, we your got way. that. We got some shows coming up. We got the Troubadour for our record release show in Los Angeles, and then shortly after that, we have the Pomona Glass House, which we just got word two days ago has sold out. So, oh, no, nice. No real use in promoting that one, but we are doing the the Glass House. Or sorry, the 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 Troubadour, and that's for our record release for the new record. Love Pomona. I've I've <clears throat> been to the Glass House. I played with uh, nice. what's the what's the theater across the street? The Fox. The Fox. Fox. I played yeah. there with Violent Femmes once. Oh, cool. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. yeah that place rules. Bands. That was, I think that was like one of my favorite shows of, of all time. Um, cool. And, and it's like a cool that, place. Speaking of crust, that theater has that nice little amount of crust. It's like real <laughs> throwback, you know? Yeah. Inland Empire. Layer. Inland Empire is definitely like a crust hub, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, dudes. Well, this was great. Um, William, Danny, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely see you down the road somewhere. Much love. All right, right, man. Thanks a lot. Peace. Laters.